Professor Goodwin, Dean Chalinski, Reverend Jackson for giving me an opportunity to talk about this issue. And Professor Normer, I, uh, I'm by training a neuropsychiatrist and I was trying to think about what it was that I wanted to get over and talk to you about um, that would somehow relate psychiatrically. And as I continued thinking about, um, as um, Andrew was talking about, this history that we have of uh, infectious diseases and the fear and the stigma that rises in relationship, to some degree, uh, to these outbreaks, a, a, a phrase came to mind, and, I, and I, have to, I have to use it on you. I have to see if it works for you. Um, the phrase is the delusion of diseases. And I think that's really what we see when we see these outbreaks, uh, when we see the stigmatization and the fear and the stigma. We, we really are dealing with a delusional concept. And let me, let me define delusion for you so that we can kind of get a sense of what we're actually describing here. A delusion is a fixed false belief. So it's, a, it's something that people use. Uh, we often think of it in terms of with people that are psychotic, but delusions are really not about that. Delusions are really designed to create a wall around the anxiety of irrationality. Something is happening in your life um, if you are 17 to 25, it may be that you're going through a prodromal phase, what we call a prodromal phase, becoming schizophrenic or starting to manifest bipolar symptoms. You're having thoughts that don't quite fit or are so different than you were thinking before. And suddenly you understand, oh, well, it's because they put this chip in my brain. Or oh, well, it's because someone is talking to me from another planet. And the delusion starts to develop. And what does the delusion do? It makes you feel better. It gives you an explanation and an understanding for why these very bizarre and very strange and unusual things are happening to your body and happening to your mind. So. So a delusion, when we talk about the delusion of disease, we're talking about diseases that take on this almost mythical quality, this delusional quality in the face of, as Andrew said, known for a fact. What is really known, what we really understand. Now, <clears throat> the one thing about delusions is that they always have a kernel of truth. There's always this smoke in the midst of this fire. So it's not as though they just come out of nowhere. There's always a little bit of truth that makes people say, well, they can point to that and they can say, well, you know, this woman was at the um, Pentagon three days ago and she got sick and she vomited. And therefore, we should quarantine her for 21 days. She has no other symptoms. But we should quarantine her for 21 days. Or in Texas, where this junior college had invited some students from uh, Nigeria to come and visit, right? And they canceled this trip. Or uh, Mr. O'Reilly uh, talking to the um, general counsel of Liberia and asked, saying, don't you really think, I mean, come on now, you know, don't you really think that we should stop those flights from West Africa? I mean, doesn't that make sense to you? So there's always this nubbin 
of reality that's overwhelmed by this ocean of irrationality. The, the, the tension that you see between delusions and value thinking is really the tension between stress and distress. You know, when we always think of them as being the same, but they're not. Stress is that tension that works, right? Stress is that ability that allows you to continue and to function. Stress is that no pain, no gain. I don't know much about this, but that's what they say for people that exercise. You know, it's that no pain, no gain. That's stress. Distress is different. Distress is too much. Distress is irrational fear. Distress is that inability to separate out the wheat from the chaff. And the difference between stress and distress are two things. First one is information, and the second one is education. Now, information is just a commodity. You know, information really may have certain value, but it is no different, and particularly in the world we live today. Information has less value if you can't discern what it means. If you can't really understand how it fits, is this true, is it not, is it part of the evolutionary process? You know, how do things change? And that's particularly true when we're talking about medicine, because medicine, and if there are any doctors in the audience, I, I apologize, kind of, in advance, but, uh, you know, medicine is scientific. It is not scientific. Right? Medicine is a discipline and an art. It is not a science. And that is true about psychiatry. That is true about cardiology. That is true about so many different disciplines of medicine. And as long as we continue to take the information of medicine, the commodity, and not look at it from an educated perspective, then we're going to have these delusions of disease. The reason why, other than, you know, you can't say no to Michelle, that I'm here today, <laughs> is because we are in an educational institute. And what I see really missing today, as we kind of follow this transition of delusion of disease, is education, because those people that are most vulnerable on both, spe on both spectrums of age, the very, very young, the very, very old, the poor, the urban poor, and the rural poor, those people that are most vulnerable to that delusion are also the ones that are the least educated, right? and are also the ones that are getting pushed out of that educational system so that they get all of their information from the news. They get all of their information from places that don't discriminate, that don't allow them to understand the critical thinking component that is required to keep things like Ebola from overcoming them emotionally. They are the most stigmatized and they are the most isolated. And of course, when you, when, uh, as, as uh, Andrew put up the three countries, Sierra Leone, you know, Liberia, these are the poorest, some of the poorest countries in Africa. So nothing has changed. Right. Delusions come from madness. Right. It can be political madness. It can be intellectual madness. It can be medical madness. But delusions come from madness. And as people that are interested in education, it's our role to create a trajectory that doesn't allow that to occur. Thank you very much for your time.